Can we know the exact date of the Lord's return? Well, folks, we're so glad you could join us on Prophetic Perspective. We brought Lee Brainerd here of Soothkeep. Uh, he's a Bible translator, a Bible prophecy teacher, a good friend of our ministries, one of the best writers I've ever read. And Lee's going to address date setting. And, I, and Lee, I go to Matthew 24, 42, and Jesus himself says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. And then verse 44, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Well, People aren't saying they know the exact hour, but there sure seem to be a lot of people running around saying they know exact day or the exact season. Or Can we know the day that the Lord's returning? No, absolutely. We cannot know the day nor the hour. And it, it's, it's been bothering me for the last year or so that we have people who say, well, listen, we're not date setting because we're not setting a date and we're not staking our reputation on this date. We're only suggesting dates. But, you know, if you make a high speed gee whiz argument to establish a date and then you say we're just suggesting this date as a possibility and we're offering it for the encouragement and the hope of the believers and then the believers put their hope in it and then that date goes belly up. And this has been going on for years. Where was the gain? And are you guys paying attention to the losses? I get letters all the time from people who are crushed because they've been cycled through this hamster wheel of date setting for three, four years, four or five date setting theories go bankrupt and they're crushed. You know, I think that uh, if a person sets a date, if there's enough guesses in the world, somebody's going to be right. Yes. But it's just that, it's a guess. But what it does, as you said, Lee, is it detracts and distracts from what the Lord tells us, which is that we should be on the alert and keeping our eyes on Him and being about His business. In other words, He gave us marching orders, and the last order He gave was to go and share the gospel. In other words, the Great Commission to all the tribes, tongues, and nations of the world, and to live out That's as right. Christ here and now until He does come. And we know that only the Father knows the day or the hour. Now, I have to tell you, I have a, a good friend who says, well, I don't know the day or the hour, but I don't know the time of day. And I, I say, what, what do you mean? He said, well, I know the Lord's coming at night because it says He's going to come like a thief in the night. And I asked, well, what, where do you live? What time zone? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, the world's a half night and half day at all moments. And he said, yeah, well, wherever I live, it'll, it's going to be at night. It's going to be a slow motion return. Oh. And no, no, brother, I think you've got that mistaken That's in right. terms of your hermeneutic, your understanding. And yet this clamor to set a date or to try to solve the puzzle, I just find that to be so foreign because there are so many things I couldn't possibly comprehend. This is the mind of the Father Himself that someone wants to try to discern and understand. I find that to be so haughty and presumptuous on the case as part of any human being. And it's sad too because I was at a church service where the pastor was openly hostile to Bible prophecy and he, he pointed out to Hal Lindsey. He said, well, Hal Lindsey back in the 60s and 70s when he wrote Late Great Planet Earth, and I've read the book, it's an excellent book, and he said, well, if we're looking at a generation, a generation would probably be about 1988 when Jesus Christ will come back. Well, I have met many people who were very passionate in the 70s and 80s about the Lord's return, but when 1988 came, rolled around, now, Lindsay wasn't date setting, yep. he was just saying, if we calculate it, but they lost their faith in the return of soon return of Jesus Christ yep. because of that. Uh, we can talk about the great sign of Revelation 12 when that yep. came out. Uh, we can talk about Harold Camping and all, all his times. What are some of the current date setting that we can, so we know that they exist so we can avoid them? Yeah, well, like last year in, the, in, in June, July, in the summer, people were getting all excited about the upcoming Feast of Trumpets, and they were talking about the Shemitah cycle, and the Shemitah cycle was going to come to an end, and therefore th that meant the tribulation is going to start, therefore the rapture has to happen last summer. And I did a, a video exposing this is, is, well, I said it was a relatively serious error. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was just a date and it's wrong, well, big deal. But this is really an issue of, of the historical grammatical hermeneutic versus a sensationalist hermeneutic. Mm. And, and this is undermining the authority of Scripture. It's undermining how people handle Scripture. That's the great danger. Because if you cycle through four or five different uh, rapture theories over a few years, and they all go belly up, you're, it, each one, you are teaching people to be stronger and stronger in an unscriptural hermeneutic. Well, now the one that we're facing this year is that people are saying, well, we think that the, the, in Daniel 9.27, the covenant with many 
That's not going to be a covenant with Israel. There's, we, it's not right to say that that has to deal specifically with Israel. It just says with many, so it can be with many nations, can be with the Gentiles. And, and people are associating that covenant with many with the upcoming UN um, meeting that's, that is the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals a Committee meeting in New York City in September. And they think that, that this meeting is going to be marking the, st the agreements that they make. They're going to mark the start of the tribulation. Now, they're not saying for absolute certain this is going to be the start of the tribulation, but they're just raising the possibility. Oh, this really could be the start of the tribulation. We could be going up this summer. This is lightweight date setting. It's really date setting. It's date setting. You know, I find it to be akin to people who want to determine the identity of the Antichrist. Yep. And so this becomes like a parlor game of figuring out, well, who would fit the characteristics in the Bible? Or to pick out your favorite uh, possible Antichrist and, and tout them as, as the person. So recently when Charles was elevated and ordained as King of England, I've had people say, well, that he's going to be the Antichrist because now he's a king. No, no, no. Have you actually studied Charles's personality and seen how much influence he has even in his own country? He is respected now as king, but I do not believe he will be the Antichrist, and yet people stake their reputation on King Charles is the Antichrist. I think that we at Lamb and Lion Ministries, and Lee, you agree completely in this regard, we believe that we as Christians can and should discern the season of the That's Lord's right. return. In other words, a long period of time, but all the signs are pointing to the eminence of His coming. And so even Paul, as he writes in Thessalonians, said He's going to come like a thief in the night. Back to my uh, friends thinking it's going to be nighttime. But he said, You, brethren, are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of light nor of darkness. In other words, we should be discerning, as the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 10, that the signs are manifesting and the Lord's coming is imminent. But at Lamb and Lamb Ministries, we do not set a day or an hour because only the Father knows. We just encourage urgent expectation and holy living and being serious about fulfilling the Great Commission, which is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's yeah. so important to make a difference because, yeah, we can be down on date setting because date setting ruins people's faith and expectation yes. in the Lord. But the Lord wants us to know the season of His Lord, right. of His return. And He gives us signs of the end times to point that out. And so we right, believe that yeah. we are in that season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, <clears throat> when I... Recently, I responded to Daniel 9.27, the covenant with many, and said there's, I said there was 0% chance that this was going to be the mark of the beginning of the tribulation. And people went ballistic on me. I could not believe how much negative feedback I got on this. I mean, I always get a little blowback. But people were accusing me of denying the imminency of the rapture. And folks, the imminency of the rapture is a very different issue than whether that's the mark of the tribulation or not, or the start of the tribulation. Amen. Is that because people are just so desperate for hope, desperate to get out of this world? Or they just want anything they can cling on to that says the rapture is coming and let's, let's finish this. I think there is a great deal of truth in that. I mean, people are <clears throat> just so tired of this life. They're tired of pain. They're tired of discouragement and they want out. And they kind of gravitate towards uh, any rapture theory which says it could be this year. Well. Here's a, what we need to make a distinction. We absolutely believe it could happen this year, this summer, this month, today. It could happen what, right here while we're live on air. Amen. But that's not the same thing as giving somebody a theory that says it's very, very, very likely going to happen this summer and very, very, very unlikely that we're not going to be here next year. Because imminence says, yes, we could go up today. We could go up this summer. Imminence does not say that we're not going to go up next summer. Right. You know, I, I said already, the only person that knows the date, the hour, the exact moment of the rapture is the Father, not even the Son and not the angels in heaven. So how would any of us dare to think that we can figure it out when only the Father knows? And so I'll go back to Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. Amen. In that realm which is vast yeah. and would blow my three pound brain includes the date and the time of the rapture. It says, but the things revealed belong to us. The fact that Jesus is coming back, that is a promise that I would stake my entire life, my, my eternity on because it is a promise of God and I'm trusting Him 
because he is trustworthy. The fact that it is coming soon and very Amen. soon, all the signs point to, I believe that with all my heart. But I'm not going to try to determine the exact day or the hour because I cannot know the mind of God. It's an exercise in futility. Absolutely. Well, folks, uh, check out Lee's site. we got the information below, and I think you'll be blessed on his studies. Don't let your heart be burdened by every new theory that comes out that Jesus Christ is coming at this day or that. Trust that when he says he's coming back, he is coming back. Be expected while you're waiting. Do good works and evangelize. God bless you.